Hello there guys, welcome to Darkness Within 2, um, part 6 I believe. Um, we've just spoken to Henry and he gave us an idea to talk to a man called uh, Mr. Armitage, I believe, Jacob Armitage, who apparently lives in this town. Hmm. I just realised it's been a while since I've been out here. Um, apparently he lives across from this wolf statue in front of it, so around here I would assume, or well, not the inn, and not down there, um, one of these buildings, this one possibly, yeah let's try this one, yeah this is it. Is anyone in? Oh yeah, good. Hi there. Shh. Hi there. Hello. My name is Howard. I'm here because Henry Lawrence told me you could help me with a special matter. What matter is that? Do you recognize the name The Gate? I had a feeling you were going to ask that. Your voice. Your eyes. Those burning bright eyes. You look exactly like him. Who? Him! He told me about you once. How you would come back one day. This is your destiny. You cannot go against it. Uh, okay. Um, at this point, this guy is just going to give me a bunch of information, so I'm just going to sit back and listen. I think you're confusing me with someone else. I don't understand what you're talking about. Who is he? Mr. Nathaniel. He was the one who called you beyond time. He learned that if he appealed to... Yogg-Sothot, someone from his own bloodline would one day come back. I was only a child, but I remember everything. I remember what they did under that damn place. I can see him in your eyes. And there was that other child. He was not human. He looked exactly like one. And they treated him like one. But I could tell he wasn't human at all. No human child can speak with the knowledge of the darkest abysses like him. None can speak about the heathen arcane knowledge of the darkest ages which are veiled from the eyes of simple men like us. If only you heard him, then you would understand me. But yet, all that is also in you. You will soon remember. Everything will come back to you. Every memory. Silently, I listened to his muffled voice as he screamed, growled, jumped and crashed around at night under the ground. What do you mean, Mr. Nathaniel called me beyond time? They needed a blood descendant, for only such a person can do what they require. Mr. Nathaniel, he could speak with his ancestors. Or maybe the opposite was true. They told him to call you. And so he did. He somehow learned strange languages he never even knew existed. And with this knowledge, he read forbidden books gathered from around the world. Passages about summoning beyond time. Those fiendish necromantic murmurings and chants. How did this Mr. Nathaniel learn such an appeal? He learned it from Jediah, a shadow from his own lineage, from your lineage. Who is this Jediah? I don't know. I only know his name, 
and that he was from Nathaniel's bloodline. I once read in one of the books that even if you kill the physical body of some people, it doesn't mean they're really dead and will disappear from this world. They can find a way to come back and then silently wait for their time to come. What child? The child Mr. Nathaniel was told to take in. He took him into his home, despite strong opposition from Mrs. Ingrid, his wife. During the early days, the child often suffered serious seizures, and they had to lock him up after he murdered a maid. It was horrible. That was the time Mr. Nathaniel fired all the maids and servants except my father since he'd been with him for a long time and knew many secrets. Then, they gave the boy something to make him calm. It seemed like he forgot what he knew. And after that, he grew up in that house like a normal child. Until one day, when he left the house to go elsewhere. I don't know where he went, but I was told he would come back when the right time came. I know he is also here. I can feel him. Who told him to take the child in? I don't know. It was so sudden. One particularly stormy night, a stranger came with that child. He was a tall and dangerous looking man. All the servants were frightened of him at first sight. Yet. He himself seemed afraid of the child. I listened to their conversation and learned that he could hardly speak our language. So he spoke with Mr. Nathaniel in a language that only he seemed to know. Only two days later did we really discover why he came. He'd brought the child from a distant place for Mr. Nathaniel to raise, and he accepted the boy in without hesitation. But he never explained why he agreed to do it. Why did Mrs. Ingrid want to escape? I'm not sure, but I think she saw something terrible. She knew a lot about the things her husband was interested in doing. But after the child incident, she started to hate him, though she stayed by his side. After a while, the situation began to change and got more serious. And that's when the secret meetings began. She hated it all, both the meetings and those who attended them. And one day, it seems she couldn't take it anymore and ran away. But Mr. Nathaniel's friends forced him to take her back and lock her up. They saw Mrs. Ingrid as a threat who might reveal secrets about them. He had to do as they instructed, but he wasn't happy about it. He is completely mad, but I must get some answers. Can you tell me about the gate? It is the building nestled over the Black Abyss. You should have remembered it by now. But it seems it is still not clear for you. You will remember soon. What do you mean by Black Abyss? That place is built upon a web of underground passages that lead to Gehenna. That's why they call it the Gate. It is the gate to the unlit hell beneath the surface that hides unimaginable secrets from our eyes. How can you know this much about me? Mr. Nathaniel told me some things, but I learned most of what I know from eavesdropping and secretly reading the same things he read. Only the ones in English, of course. He had some friends who shared the same interests as him. When they gathered and the incense was heavy in the air, it was easy to listen in on their excited conversations. They often talked about you and some others who are like you. And there were other things that I wouldn't have understood unless I'd read some of the books. 
his wife, that poor woman, hated his friends and the topics they spoke about in those heathen meetings. Once, she tried to escape, but he brought her back and, and, and locked her up in her room. She died there. But he was not like that originally. The only mistake he made was moving into that house of his ancestors after he married. But maybe it was a fate he could not fight against. He seems completely mad. But somehow, I get the feeling his words weren't just crazed ramblings or the wild imagination of a madman. And that's all he's going to tell us today. Hmm. Okay, um, well one thing's for certain, we're going to need to investigate the gate at some point. I'm just wondering if it's now. Um, it might be tomorrow morning though, to be honest, because, you know, it, it seems like it's quite late right now. I'm going to drop by the inn. I wonder if I've still got room there. I probably do. Uh, might as well talk to this guy, I suppose. I heard some unpleasant rumors about a mansion outside of town. What can you tell me about it? It's out in the wilderness, about 30 miles from here. I've never been there, but I remember an incident that occurred right here in this inn. I was just a kid at the time. One night, an old woman with a dark veil covering most of her face came from that house and stayed here a short while until she was forcefully taken back by a group of old men with fake beards. Who knows who they were, but it was obvious she had secretly escaped from them. I think she was waiting for the train to take her away from them. Back against her will. I was very young then. But I remember it like it was yesterday. When she saw them, she shrieked with fear. Some words were in Latin, I think. We never heard of her again. I've also heard some very bad stories about barbaric rites that take place at particular times of the year. That's why nobody wants to visit that house. It's empty now, but most of the people are afraid even to go too near it anymore. Very interesting. Hmm. Um, how can I get there? How can I get there? It's impossible to get there on foot at this time of year. The roads will be covered with snow. And it would be too dangerous to walk through the woods full of hungry wolves. I think maybe Herbert could help you. He passes near it because of his work. What room did the lady from that mansion stay in? I can't remember precisely. But she stayed in one of the rooms on the first floor. Where can I find this Herbert? In luck. He's right back there, eating alone. Thanks. If you want, I can speak with Herbert for you. He doesn't like to speak with strangers, but I'm sure I can persuade him. That would be great. Okay, thanks. Wait, are we going now, or...? All right, we're going now. Right, okay. The gate. This part of the game is so awesome.
Yes, yes you do. Day two, arrival at the place known as the gate. Okay, where the hell do I start? Well, I suppose let's try the front door. Although I do have a feeling that it won't open. No, okay. Um, maybe there's a way in f through the side? There's a back door or something, I'm not sure. Okay, it looks like the path goes off in that direction to somewhere else. Let's go let's go left and see where that goes. Okay, it's a well. Now I remember. Uh, check this out. Mm, and check the cover out as well. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it from here, but... Um, Maybe I go around the, the side. Yeah, there you go. If you remember the uh, the last puzzle in the first game, where I put the uh, the discs in the floor, I think that is one of them. Hmm. Uh, okay, let's get back to trying to get inside this house. Might as well go around the back. Now, I don't think I need to go in through a window or anything. Oh, what was that? I could examine something. I wasn't making that up, was I? Ah. Oh, right. Well, that wasn't worth it. Okay. Oh. Looks like there's another fork in the road. Ah. This could be what I'm looking for. Yes. I think I need to go through that door. Or may ah, maybe not actually. Um well, let's see what's down here first. Right, it's another building. Small in comparison. I don't remember this place. Thank you very much. Is that blood on the door? It sort of looks like blood. And it's locked and I don't think I have a key. No. Uh, okay. the front to get to this area. Ah, oh, is that a garage? I might be able to get through here as well. Let's just check this out. Maybe I can lift this up or... Okay. Here. Yeah. I actually have a feeling this is locked as well. Yeah, okay. Check this out. That should go down to the, uh, the the basement area, I think. It is padlocked. I, mm, well, let's, let's see. Oh, good, yeah. Yep, yeah, and to be honest, it's a good thing I went around the building first, because I think I can use the shovel wherever it is. Around here, there it is. 
Yes, it should. Okay. Ho, ho, ho. Let's go. Let's see if we can find this black abyss into the underworld. Okay. Uh, let's try this door. No, it looks broken. Can't open it at all. Okay. Um, there is another door here. Alright, yeah, okay. I'm just going to uh, move some stuff away. Move this. Wow, that's quite heavy. Um, well, if that door's not going to be open, I might as well put it all over here. somewhere. There you go. Um, can I just move this? Yep. Yeah, that can go over there. Just as long as I can get out as well. Oh, Jesus Christ. Get over there. And just finally this table. Ooh. Damn it. That'll do it, I think. Okay. Right. Alright, we've got a generator over there. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I suppose I need to find some, some gas. A fuse box. Can't do anything with it, unfortunately. Okay. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> There's the gas. Um, I, I probably need to do this, so let's give it a go. Okay. Good, good. There's no on or off though, like there was in the other one. Um, maybe I have to turn it on somewhere else. Okay. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Actually, it might be better if I use my flashlight. Uh, it's a little better, I think. Okay, we have a. Uh an old, an old radio, I think. E can't do anything with it. Okay. All right, let's let's get this open. Okay. Can I open any of these? No. Anything inside? Can't really see, to be honest. Oh, here we go. We've got some stairs. Okay, I should be uh, able to get to the ground floor there. Let's keep going there. Let's just explore this place. What's in there? I don't think there's anything in there, actually. No. Stop it with the creaking, seriously. How many wine bottles do you need? Oh. Okay. Howard, don't drink them. Okay. Oh, okay. We're on the other side of that door at the beginning. So we've done full circle now. Okay. Uh. Okay. Let's go up. Harmel 
smell again. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Those uh, incense sticks are over there. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, so uh, I guess we're in the kitchen. I forgot how big this place was. This is going to take me a while to explore. Let's just start with the kitchen, though. Let's uh, open these up. Nope, nothing. Nothing in that. Nope. Nothing in that either. Fridge. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Okay. Um. Ah. Okay. Ah, right, okay. When I find the front door, I think I can unlock it now. Alright. This is all completely old stuff, yeah. No one's been here in a while. Okay, I, I think I came out of this door. Yes. Yeah, I definitely did. Um, okay. Where do I start? Hmm. Well, you know what? I'm going to start on the next video. I'll see you then.